We're back. Andre, do you want to we chit chat, please? Thank you. Yeah, I'm um, taking staff advice and. Um, uh, any changes to 10Ks would have to go back to hearings panel, which is obviously a long-winded, drawn-out um, and, and indeed costly process. So I'm happy to withdraw my amendment on that basis. Um, I put the amendment forward um, just to query, you know, to make sure we are making the best decision um, that we can. Uh, and I have reservations about what the public will think about 10Ks. I tried driving through 10Ks through my local retirement village, Anthony Wilding, and uh, bless them, I do really struggle to drive at 10, but I do. Um, it is one of the most painful exercises uh, that you will do. Um, but the, I have, I've got full faith in the hearings panel. Um, they're very confident that they've consulted on this, they've received the feedback, um, and, and I'm satisfied with that. Um, but you, do have concerns yeah, fair uh, comment, as fair to comment. how 10K will be seen. Excellent. So and indeed the exercise that, when driving through. Thank you. So, so any other debate? Any other debate? Any other debate? Eric? <laughs> and you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was happy to support Andre and that um, and because I too agree that 10k an hour doesn't make much sense. Um, that is the car park speed limit that our council uh, suggests or we have, if you look up parking lot speed limits, it is, that is a parking lot speed limit. This isn't a parking lot. It is a place where people will commute through on cycles and to Kelly's point around the speed of cyclists, the average beginner cyclist does over 20k an hour when they're cycling along. So uh, they are from, what, sorry, the what? Let him go. Uh, and when we first put the cycleway network on the budget of this council to encourage more people to cycle, the overwhelming feedback we got from people cycling is they wanted their cycling commute to be as quick and efficient as possible. Uh, so encouraging, uh, slowing cyclists down through there, for me, makes no sense. Um, 10k an hour is, like Andre pointed out, uh, painfully slow. Uh, I would have been happy with 20 or the marked area speed limit of, of 30. Um, so doing this, uh, to me, makes no sense. Uh, and it should be perpendicular car parking through there anyway. High Street, forever in a day, had perpendicular car parking on one side of the road and parallel on the other. And it worked really well down through the section uh, outside Echo Records and uh, uh, winds were down there at Java Cafe. It was a very busy area uh, and it operated really, really well. So this is um, overkill and an overspend on something that could be more efficient. Okay, Pauline. Oh, sorry, Sam. Sam was next. Yeah, just really briefly, I just wanted to thank uh, Mel, John and Mark for the work they've done on this. I, no, I think I, I, I go along with that. A lot of work gone into yeah, this. We kind of do ourselves a bit of a disservice when we relitigate a lot of this stuff. And, and I get where people are coming from with the speed limit stuff, but it is really helpful if it's raised prior to so the staff can get the proper advice. Um, it's, it's really unfortunate that something that has got a really good compromise uh, based on community feedback uh, is now probably going to be perceived really negatively out in the community. I mean, I go down there quite a bit, and the reality is if, if you could drive faster than that, uh, you'd be... You know, I don't, I'd, I'd love to know what kind of car you have because it, it's, it would be a real challenge. And the other thing is, you know, in terms of being pragmatic, um, you know, the police are not going to be there with a speed gun or a speed camera gun, are they? I mean, they've got bigger challenges across the city. What this is doing is sending a signal on a very small bit of, of, bit of road. And I think the, uh, the heartening thing for me was that Melanie, John and Mark have been able to get a really good compromise in the community, which is what we ask the hearings panels to do. That's so what they're all about. We shouldn't relitigate this. We should, you know, should just let them get on and... and um, uh, the last thing we need to do is create more work for what is a small stretch of land. Yeah, right. Thank you. Look, um, yeah, I, I want to echo the thanks to the hearings panel and Melanie as well for chairing that because it's a, an excellent outcome, I think. And I think 10Ks is perfect for along there. It's a beautiful stretch of road and um, it's taken a while to, um, to have it restored. And I remember when the work was being done on the buildings, I think we had to agree to take out some trees there so that they could restore the verandas and the buildings properly. Um, and so you wouldn't want to go any faster than 10 k's. You'd miss it all. Um, and that whole area there, that whole Mackenzie and Willis, Alice's, Cotter's building, um, it's all, <laughs> it's an incredible wealth of heritage. And it's a beautiful, the conflict beautiful. conflict you can't speak. <laughs> I don't own it anymore. It's a beautiful part of the city. So I'm fully supportive of the recommendation. Um, I'm a little bit with uh, Councillor Templeton on that right hand turn. The last thing we want to do is see it become a, a through fair, a cut through. 
Um, but I reckon that's just to watch and see the space. There's nothing to say that it couldn't be addressed later on if it does become uh, dangerous. But at the moment, I think thanks to the panel for reaching a good compromise, and I'm looking forward to supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. At 10K. Yeah, thank you. Uh, one of the things that seems to be um, missed, and it's the highest on our pri priority with regards to hierarchy of safety, and that is pedestrians. So 10 Ks, if you're in town with the wee ones or whatever, and it is at 10 Ks, it is so much more safer than it is at 30 Ks or whatever. So taking the cyclists out, we want it to be a real um, pedestrian thoroughfare, and along with Cashel Street and Churn Street, we want to really start enlivening our central city, and we're not going to do it if we don't start slowing the traffic, including cyclists. Now, any speed limit that we have, and, and anywhere in New Zealand, how many people do really look at it and stay with it, whether they're driving or cyclists? Very few, I'd imagine, so, or eyewitness. Or, or so I would really encourage that we've got more 10K to support, um, trying to encourage more people into the city to feel safe walking around. And um, if cyclists are breaking the law, then I hope they get pinged just like the card users. Thank you. OK, so... Andre, you can't talk because you already have, I'm sorry. I know you're looking really upset. So I, I, that wasn't part of the debate, though, was it? Yeah. Perhaps, yes. Oh, yeah. No, it's in debate. Oh. Uh, it's in debate. Under 17.5 of standing orders, a member may not speak more than once to a motion at a meeting of council, committee, or community board. Yep. But, the, the, but, but they were speaking to an amendment. Yeah. Let him have a debate. Mm. He, was, he was just saying he's recording. So that, sorry, that was just speaking to the amendment, okay. not debating the... Right, the, the standing the orders and let him speak. Fire away. Okay. Thank you. I no, just, just want to reiterate that I'm also not keen to um, relitigate, and that, that's why I've withdrawn the amendment. Um, in terms of a compromise, I just wanted to put forward the idea of a 20, which would essentially be a compromise. Um, I do genuinely want the public to have full faith in what we're doing here. Um, and... Wanted us to consider if that was a maybe a way of achieving that. Um, my, my concern here is that while 10 Ks is indeed safer, we currently allow people to take a lime scooter on footpaths mm -hmm. through our central city mm -hmm. at 15 Ks, which is five kilometres greater than what we're going to allow cars going through, not on a footpath. So, the, mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, there is a, bit, a potential issue there. It's just something I'd like to make clear, which is why I've wanted to raise the issue. Thank good, you. good point, mate. Yanni, yeah, did you have something? I saw your hand up. Yep. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I appreciate the work that the panel has done, and I'm um, just disappointed that we're we're not providing shopping trolley parking because if you look at Google Earth, there's a, a shopping trolley already parked there, and I'm concerned it might lose its space. Um, but I, but in seriousness, I would like council to address the shopping trolley issue. And I know that's for a different different day, but um, just to show the impact. But what concerns me is if you look at that photo. Actually, what you see is a really beautiful intersection. You see nice paving, some bicycle stands, uh, everything looks really good. But then if you look at the plan that we've got presented to us today, you can see that that intersection is going to be completely changed um, and you're going to have cars driving through making a right-hand turn. You're going to have a whole bunch of paving, I presume, dug up to make sure that all the things in the plan can happen. And I'm just worried about the cost of this. If you look at um, the two intersections on each end of High Street, in this diagram, they're actually already being upgraded and look really lovely and have a really nice level of service. Um, I, I can't justify the expense of um, putting 2.5 million or 2.25 million into the middle of the street to upgrade it when we've got much higher priorities in our suburbs where we've got um, stagnant water that sits for months in, in drains where um, we can't, when it rains, get the drains to function properly and you've heard some of the deputations around some of the flooding issues. So to me, it seems like you could easily just put the renewal uh, maintenance uh, budgets in place for this street, make it really nice um, by just doing um, what you would normally do in terms of repairing the road and the footpaths. They look in actually pretty good condition already compared to many of the ones in my area. So um, I, won't, I won't support um, the uh, spending of this money on this project at this time when it also seems that we're basically over, going over existing work that we've already done at huge cost to make it even even more gold-plated. So, um, yeah, I appreciate the work that the panel has done. I do think listening to the submissions in terms of the design that they've 
they have done a, a good job in weighing up the different submitters. But from a fundamental point of view, in terms of our priorities, this to me would have to be one of the lowest priorities in the city rather than one of the top. Okay, thank you, Yanni. Uh, Kelly? Uh, thanks, Phil. <clears throat> yeah, um, look, I, I think the, um, that the hearings panel have done a great job. And, uh, and I'm actually quite happy with the recommendation of 10 k's an hour. It does send a signal. I kind of regret saying about the, uh, the cyclists, um, you know, going 10 k's an hour. I know that they probably will go a bit quicker, but it is about sending a signal. Um, I'm sure the um, the general public would look at this and, and might think, uh, as Sam mentioned, that you know um, it's hard for them to understand. But I think we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't put a reasonable level of scrutiny uh, on everything that comes before us. I'm happy to support this today. Um, I get the point. So, thank you. Okay, so we're oh we're away laughing. So I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? Aye. Ooh, so we've got one, two, three. Hands. Show, oh, show of hands in. All those in favour? Yep. All those against? Has carried. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. If you're asking that your votes against be recorded or abstain, can I votes against be recorded? It's Aaron, Yanni, Celeste, Sarah, and Andre and Stephanie. Andre as well? Andre and Stan. All right. So that's passed. Thank you. So now we're up to 